Hello folks and welcome to another pre-modern video. Today we're going to be playing in the Magic Online Society League and what I'm going to be trying out is an interesting approach. Uh, I've been a big fan of the card medley mage in the format since I kind of started playing it, realized it, it's just very very good. And uh, what I'm going to be trying out today is a different shell for medley mage. Uh, there's a deck that's called the Solution or Patriot or however you want to call it. Blue, white, red and it's like mid-range with like medley mages and like silver knights and stuff like that but the problem that that deck has is that the mana is awful it's really really bad to the point where it's a mid-range deck playing gemstone mines right so uh, that's just terrible so i was messing around and kind of brainstorming the idea of uh, just going straight up blue and white which would make the mana base a lot cleaner and even to the point of allowing you to play cards like dust bowl in and wasteland so this is like a different approach to the solution and i obviously I, this is not my idea this is uh, started from like remy i don't know uh, the last name but uh, they've been working on this deck for a while apparently and i grabbed uh, i grabbed that uh, initial idea because it had all the cards that i was thinking of like it had mums it had silver knights meddling mages exalted angels those are like cards that i wanted to play and the approach that they were going for i was uh, my first thoughts obviously went for cards like mana league and counterspell and try to make like a mid-range style game plan going on but the idea here is just Parallax Tide and Parallax Way combined with Seal of Cleansing and Stifle. And the more that I thought about it, the more made, the more sense that it made and the bigger fan that I became of this deck list. Like, this just feels like so much better than everything that I was thinking of. This is like an extremely smart approach. Uh, the only issue that it had is like, this is precisely the kind of deck where I think Enlightening Tutor is not very good. And that people, you know, are playing like four Enlightened Tutors in decks like this, uh, and um, I, I'm just not a fan of that. So instead of going for that, I'm going for some portents and a singleton copy of Impulse uh, to kind of like not uh, just to avoid playing with the card with the card uh, Light Tutor. I'm also, you know, going like uh, with four uh, Parallax side effects. I was considering adding Factor Fiction because I am kind of afraid of the control matchup. You know, like uh, Blue White uh, Still or like even stuff like Psychitog or like banned uh, like oath control or whatever so i feel like those matchups could potentially be an issue so because of that uh, i was thinking of fof but i feel like this is just like the cleaner approach and this main deck felt pretty good to me um in the main deck we also have access to in the mana base sorry we also have access to like some pretty clean mana and the the addition of sky cloud expands is really what uh, kind of uh, lit the light bulb there this is this is the kind of land that you see uh, very rarely in pre-modern even though i think they they are kind of very good right particularly when you combo them with uh, cards like reflecting pool this actually fixes your mana very nicely and it allows your wastelands and dust balls to you know tap for colored mana quote unquote uh, which is very very nice right uh, being able to have like you know turn one wasteland turn two sky color expanse you can cast melee mage on two like that's pretty sick uh, if you ask me um but but yeah so mana base looked very very clean as opposed to the the original you know like the the blue white red version of the deck and the the parallax approach with seal of cleansing and stifles really really did it for me so uh, stole the idea from remy and then made some changes to kind of see like get a little bit of a feel for the deck in the cyber we have parallax wave and this is like a key card that i really really wanted to try out this is cataclysm and uh this is the card that I'm very interested in trying out. Like, in fact, like my original version of the Blue White Solution deck actually was main decking a couple of copies of Cataclysm because this is kind of what I wanted to do. Kind of like Cataclysm into like leaving an Exalted Angel in play and then like leaving my opponents. Anything that's not a Dreadnought, Exalted Angel is probably going to be better than whatever that is. And like you destroy your opponent's mana, you completely obliterate all of their their side of the board. So uh, this feels this just felt very very strong as a card, and it feels extremely underplayed to me in the format. So uh, I just wanted to figure out if I there was a way that I could exploit this card. It found its way in the sideboard, and I assume that this is going to be like key versus control decks. And speaking of control decks, you see like the random uh, factor fiction in the sideboard. Uh, this is just for matchups where I wanted to like go long. I was thinking about maybe like going for another cataclysm or like going for the fourth parallax tide like the tide combo is going to be really good i also consider stuff like uh, like replenish uh, but it felt like a little bit awkward because we are not that good a replenish deck so 
Um, so yeah, I chose to go with like a single factor fiction. Like this could be literally anything else. <laughs> so uh, this is just like a, a placeholder ass of this league until I get a little, a couple of reps with the deck. Then R of Silence disenchant some extra disenchant effects, particularly against stuff like Oath, against stuff like Dreadnought some uh, circle protection red versus the red decks even though maybe this should just be more hydroblasts and blue elemental blasts honestly um th those just may be the better cards uh, one copy of new rod uh, curse totem versus the elves menace and stuff like madness Phyrexian furnace and tormos script versus the graveyard decks like a little bit of everything um i do have to say that um i suspect that our creature matchup is going to be reasonable but not necessarily good so Really excited to see how things actually end up working out, uh, but I would not be surprised if I end up finding out that, oh, actually, Goblins is pretty bad. Like, I mean, we have Silver Knight, so Goblins can only be so bad, but Turn 1 Lucky is something that I fear, <laughs> that I fear past anything else. Uh, but, yeah, this deck looks super fun, so I cannot wait uh, to play this league. Hopefully, you will join me, and if you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button while you're at it, and if you would like to support my content, if you are really enjoying what, what you see here, uh, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also make donations on, uh, you know, you can find the, the description of the video down below, the information you need to make a donation, and I can play any deck list of your choosing uh, whenever you, you make a donation of $30 or more. And finally, if you're interested in coaching as well, that's something that I offer, and you can, again, find all on the description. Let's play some matches. I, I just can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, hero for the first round. Look, look at this hand. Just a masterpiece. Just an absolute masterpiece. Playing versus Eddie the Intern. Very good mono blue tie the player. I think that if they go for turn one, turn one, um, tap land or whatever, I'm just going to go for Wasteland. I'm going to play around Stifle because I can mostly. So go planes, say go. We can, okay, so now what we can do is we can waste on two. Uh, actually, huh. Do we want a medley mage on two? Opponent doesn't have days. I think I'm gonna medley mage on two. Uh, they could have like mana leak, variety of other forms of counter magic, but that's fine. I think this is, this is a fine exchange. Next turn, we're gonna be able to wasteland their factory. Which is decent, I guess. Seal of Cleansing is... So, let's play Seal, see if my opponent wants to counter this. They don't. And I'm just gonna upkeep this Wasteland, because I think my opponent's playing Stifle in their deck. I'm not 100% sure, but... Uh, let's actually do this now, then. But, yeah. So now, next turn, I guess we can Portent and we can Shuffle if we need to. A little bit, a little bit awkward to have to use both of our lands in order to do that, but... It's fine. Could be worse. Okay, let's see what's up. Cast a port and target myself. Impulse. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So top, top, top. No shuffle. Play a land. Say go. I'm gonna draw the impulse and then send it back. When it's impulsing as well. So tide could be a problem, but it's fine. So I guess on my well, we're gonna do this on my own upkeep. Shuffle. Get an island, untap, draw, double source of plowshares versus the control deck. You love to see it. You love to see it. Foff. Well, I guess these doesn't matter. So I think we just do this. Because just because this is more mana efficient than this, I'm like, the disc is probably not going to do too much regardless. Just play the disc. Okay. So we're looking for Medley Mage here, because if we draw Medley Mage, we can name Chain of Vapor. Oh! Ho 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 ho! Well, hello there. Hello there, you handsome! That seems strong. That seems quite strong. So here's a Parallax Tide. And the way that this works now... So my opponent needs to Chain of Vapor my Seal of Cleansing, because otherwise we're just going to do the thing. So we want to target that land, then target that one, then that one, and that one, and then that one. And now that we have all of those triggers on the stack, we're just going to blow up my Parallax Tide. My opponent could have like main deck Stifle potentially, but if they don't have exactly Stifle right now, now they don't have lands. So one-sided Armageddon, thank you very much. Here we go. They still have the disc, though, which is obviously strong. 
Um, so let's portent myself. See what's up over there. Oh yeah, we're shuffling those. Any order and shuffle. And like the question now is, I think I just want to play a morph. My opponent's gonna be able to blow it up with disc if they want it, if they want to, but they just chain. Okay. Ooh, I get to suck a land, unbalance the disc. This seems good to me. Now they don't have a disc anymore. Well, that's so. All, all three of these cards are just blanks, <laughs> which is kind of bad. Land would be great. Ugh, should be more specific, I guess. Um. Well, here's a morph. My opponent hitting all of their land drops up to up to land number eight. Not good for me. Also, I just tapped extremely poorly here, but it does. Three mana for a tide. Okay, that sucks. So they are letting me. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They're letting me do this. So, what's the best way to go about this now? Because if I blow this up now, I get these three lands back but I lose these two. But otherwise my opponent's gonna get to wish for Stifle and I get no lands back. <laughs> so uh, I think that this is just worth doing. So they're gonna get to blow up two. I guess they don't get to, right? Oh, they save their own. Okay, <clears throat> that's fine. Oh, I guess I could have played Silver Knight. That was a mistake. Hopefully it won't matter, but I, I just have six for my turn. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> How many blanks can somebody draw, right? Ugh, that is just, that is so rough. That is so freaking rough. Oof. Hey, look at that, that's a source of Plowshares target. That's a Tide. I guess I'm just gonna not cast that one. And I think I'm gonna let them take this damage. I'm gonna flip on my opponent's end step. So now I'm gonna get Fop for two, which is gross. No Fop though. Damn, would you, would you believe that we actually blew up five of my opponent's lands here? Uh, yeah, this is why I really dislike Palinkron as a win condition. Like, I have all of these dead cards, and now it's just like, yep, now, now they're, they're online now. <laughs> like, sure, like, it cost them no mana, but, like, I have four dead cards in my hand, and now my opponent turned them on for no reason. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a big fan. I, I, I really like this deck. I am actually building this deck in paper myself, but uh, Palinchron as a win condition, I, I just don't think it's it. So we flip that, and my opponent's gonna be able to blow everything up, I guess. Never mind. Um, I guess I can play Wave, and I can protect my creatures. Hold on, that's that's kind of sick, actually. All right, I, I'm I'm loving this deck so much. <laughs> We can use wave as protection from disc. <laughs> this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. So now I can pressure my opponent to the point where they're forced to disc and then just like wave my lands, uh, wave my creatures away in response. This is amazing. Wow, yeah. Okay. So I guess that's fine. And I'm going to... My opponent's down to see your cards, by the way. So I'm just gonna not do this. And I can just... I guess I can just stifle this now. Um, it blows up both of their sapphires, but I can then blow up five of their lands. Does that matter more than my creatures being gone? Because what we can do here is we can stifle the disc trigger, which is not gonna destroy the disc, but it's gonna allow me to untap and just wave again. So I'm trying to figure out whether blowing up my opponent's uh, two medallions matters more than they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're gonna be left with two islands, but I'm gonna be left with no threat. But if they find another chain of vapor, then I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. The same is true if they find like mana leak though, right? Or like or counter spell. Man, this is this is a key point of the game. This is an absolutely key point of the game. I think I'm gonna risk it. I think I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna let everything get blown up. And now I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to untap and tie the way my opponent's lands. And just, ooh, that's pretty good. So, I guess I can play around Mana Leak, but I can't really play around. Hmm. 
I can't play around specifically Counterspell. So if my opponent top decks exactly Counterspell, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So I guess I could Medley Mage naming Counterspell first, and they go from there. I guess that seems worth it. So we're going to name Counter... We're one minute short of from doing everything, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Because now Mana Leak is turned on, right? So that's kind of the problem. But I'm still going to... Oh, wow. Fairy Conclave? Yeah, that's, that's Blout. That's dead. That's so... If, if they don't have exactly Counterspell right now, this actually worked out in the best possible way. Ah, they have exactly Mana Leak, dude. That's brutal. Okay. All right. Rough Beats. Rough Beats. Uh, so we're going to play a land and... We have another plow, so yeah, keep on attacking here. Opponent is down to zero cards. Just gonna pass the turn. Play a land. I'm gonna fetch right now. I guess I have portent in my deck, so maybe I shouldn't have fetched there. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wave here, which my opponent knows about. So if they activate before blockers, let's exile that. And the reason I'm doing this instead of plowing is because it actually takes takes a turn off the clock. And it's gonna be the same, I'm just gonna be able to stifle the wave trigger anyway. So my opponent doesn't get their lands back. So one fading trigger goes. Ugh. We're drawing a lot of blanks here. Take two. Opponent's got six lands in play. Cunning Wish. That is fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it's not too much I can do about it, so... <laughs> Capsize. Okay. So I guess we're gonna name Capsize with this Medley Mage. Which enables the... What's oh, his name, by the way, right? It enables Counterspell. Swing for two. Opponent takes two. Here's a mom. So if they want to capsize now... Ha! Huh, they just untap. Very interesting. Capsize with buyback. So if I plow... This is on my opponent's turn. If I plow my own medley mage... I mean, I just recast this medley mage naming capsize. Like, this is... This is not really going anywhere for my opponent. I guess they could have like double counter spell or something, but oh, so many lands. Um, well, here's a mage. And I guess mage is gonna name capsize. Although actually, do I even want to name capsize? I think I just I just named counter spell again. Cause my opponent's gonna be like there at two, right? So I just swing with this mom. This is just fine. Mana Leak doesn't do anything. Like, if my opponent wants to spend their turn capsizing this melee mage, like, I just swing for one and I kill them, so... <laughs> uh, this is... This seems like a fine spot to be in, honestly. Impulse is fine. We untap. You want to capsize me, mage? Sounds fine. Now we untap. So, I actually don't know how this works. I think I need to let the fading count... The fading thing resolve. And then this is what I stifle. Bone encounters here. We'll let that go. We stifle again. Honestly, it's kind of sick that we won this game. I am really excited about the fact that we won this game. <laughs> I am very, very excited. All of you, Parallax Waves, out of here. <laughs> Mom and Mom, I guess moms are fine. But Swords of Pleasures, out of here. Cataclysm. Yes, please. Cataclysm. Yes, please. Aura of Silence. Don't mind if I do. Uh, what else? Uh, Carstone doesn't do anything. Furnace doesn't do anything. And actually, Null Rod is interesting. So, Null Rod blanks. Null Rod. Oh, Foth. Yeah, for sure we want Foth. Uh, Null Rod blanks um, their like, Powder Keg style removal. But it's kind of weird because they can just like chain of vapor the new rod and then they just do the thing that they want. So it's kind of weird. I mean, we're at 58 cards, so I, I guess it's coming in, but it's it's not amazing, right? Uh, cup red. I guess I'm just bringing in a wave or disenchant. I mean, wave was actually kind of impressive there as a protection measure. But probably a disenchant is just a better card in the matchup overall. I I am so stoked about that game that we just played. <laughs> I, am, I am so incredibly stoked about how that game played out. That was awesome. I'm going to keep this hand. So we can just drop a random 2-2 two, 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 haste. I guess it's not haste. It's... Let's play a Flooded Strand. 
At this point, maybe my opponent is not main decking Stifles. We may be able to get him. Just get him a little bit. Ooh, look at this. New Rod actually blanking Mirror's Factory. You'll have to see it. You'll have to see it. Um, so I already have two blue sources. So I think I'm going to... Uh, hmm. It's interesting, right? Because... I mean, I kind of really want to play a threat, though. Let's see if my opponent's playing Stifle. They are. Okay. Good beats. Good beats. There's another Arcor Wastes. Play second factory past the turn. Okay. So here's a Silver Knight. Actually, <laughs> just being a 2-2 makes this new world so much better. <laughs> like, 2-2 first strike. Um, because it means... I, I, I guess these are, not an, these are not an artifact while they're pumping, so never mind. Never mind, so like these can't pump themselves, but they can actually pump other stuff. So they drop the tithe, which is very bad for me. So now, how do we beat this? Um, I think we're just dead here. They will need exactly stifle though, for me to, to be dead here. Land, easy land. Um, so I guess I'm just going to make the play of Medley Mage in the card that's in my hand. <laughs> Just a classic play. Medley Mage what? Yeah, the, the, the card that's in your hand. Yeah, that one. We can't attack because factories are going to own us, but I could have also named Cunning Wish or Chain of Vapor. Yep, that's another land that's gone. They're going to Chain of Vapor their own land. So now what they can do is they can Parallax tie their own thing. Cunning Wish. So do they have both? So they need Chain of Vapor and Stifle? Yep. I mean, there, there's nothing I could have done about all this, right? Just being on the draw here. Not much to be done. Planes doesn't really do anything, but I do get to swing in for two. One has got four, three cards in hand. Can't attack. Throw a fourth. Perfect. Pass the turn. We really want to dodge my opponent having anything, basically. If we draw an island, we may be... Okay, 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 okay. So we may be doing something here. Uh, I think I want to drop Meddling Mage now. It's probably going to get countered. It doesn't. Interesting. So we just need... I think we now name Chain of Vapor. Now we pass the turn back. Opponent, they did not have counter spell, which is very interesting. We do find another land that's very lucky. Um, Here's a new rod. Okay, that resolved. Three mana, four mana, five mana. Ooh, that's a lot of mana. That's Palinkron. Okay. So I could stifle this trigger? Does this trigger matter is the question. Don't think it does. Funnily enough, like, uh, Exalted Ranger races Palinkron very nicely. So I need to draw land here. Portent. Hmm. So we're just going to have to impulse main face, I guess into Reflecting Pool. Okay, I can also Mom, but I think I'm gonna get Reflecting Pool here. So, Portent myself. Another Exalted Angel, Silver Knight. This is probably not gonna be good enough, so I'm just gonna shuffle. We're gonna pass the turn. So, Chain of Vapor has been named. Uh, no Rod is in the battlefield. Man, that Portent. Portent drawing Portent is not great here. Um, So, this is gonna be six damage. So, this turn... Oh, they didn't attack with Palinkron. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Decent chance. Doesn't really do anything. So let's just play a morph. Uh, actually, hmm. So I can get a little bit risky here. And I can Parallax Tide. If I Tide, I get rid of a bunch of my opponent's lands. I think it's worth it, actually. And then we attempt to Stifle. So get rid of that one. Interesting. Well... Uh, I think I'm just gonna pass the turn, I guess, now. So now we pass the turn back. That I wonder why my opponent didn't attack last turn. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait until my opponent attacks here. Now we do that. Take four. Take that one. Take that one. And I'm also gonna be taking two more, so that now I can stifle my opponent's sense step. Because Chain of Vapor doesn't do anything, but what they can do, however, is they can counterspell. So now they're not gonna be able to counterspell anymore. Not on my turn, at least. I'm just going to let that resolve. Now the fading happens. We stifle. And we can play around Mana League here. They could have Prohibit, I guess, but... And now we get to cast a Morph. Pass the turn. 
And now next turn, we can just flip the Angel, and the Angel just raises the Blinkron. And they have a bunch of cards that don't do anything, right? The question is, am I blocking with this Angel, or am I attacking? Well, now that question has been answered. <laughs> We're blocking. Um, Play a land. I still have to be wary of... They could have Wish into Capsize. So I kind of want to find another Melody Mage so I can name Cunning Wish. So I'm going to port it myself. I don't think that's good enough. So I'm going to put that in any order. And the question now is, I think we morph this. Yeah. So actually, this cannot get stifled, which is cool. But I think we're attacking, actually. It bounces off the Polynchrom, but it, it gains me for life, right? Which makes it much harder for my opponent to race. So I think that's right. We really want to dodge the card Cunning Wish. And eventually we're just going to get to the point where we have two angels to my opponent's one angel. And that should be good enough for us to, to get there, I think. In the meantime, we're gaining four every single turn. Opponent continues to block there, which is just fine. They return it to hand. Okay. Just so I don't gain the life. Okay, so I'm just going to off here then. Counterspell. Okay. Good beats, good beats. So if that's their plan for every turn, I think I'm okay with that. If they're just going to be doing that with their mana every single turn, I think that's that's fine. Factory. Getting in there. Just going to take the chance to disenchant here. Okay. I just resolved, so no counterspell there. Seal of Cleansing is kind of nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mmm... So I think we're just swinging, forcing my opponent to do the thing. And then I'm just hard casting. Actually, am I? So I guess I can go seal first and then just morph. Nice. Uh, I'm going to take this chance to crack the fetch and pass it back. So now we're looking decent, I would say. Palinkron resolves once again. Palinkron definitely much more annoying this match than the previous one, obviously, when I just plowed it and it just died, so there's that. So let's attack with both of these, and I guess I'm gonna flip before blockers. Because otherwise my opponent can just block with one of the factories. Game four. Do I just play this out? I think so. Because now that I realize this, my opponent can't actually block next turn. So these Silver Knights can actually get busy. Powder Keg doesn't do anything. Disc would be kind of annoying. But these, uh, these, both of these Silver Knights can actually get busy. So we're just going to attack with everything, I think. Aura of Silence. Okay. Let's play that. Go to combat. All of these can get in there. Oh, I guess actually the Metal Mage could get, could get in there as well. Hmm. Yeah, I may have messed up there. Metal Mage could get BC too. In fact, it would have been great if... The Meddling Mage had gotten in there, now that I think about it. That was because I have like two answers to both of the factories. And if they do that, then they, they Palinkrona can actually not be bounced anymore. Uh, there we go. So there's the wish for Capsa. Actually, it may be too slow. I think it may be too slow because my opponent's just a two. But yeah, it, it was still a punt. It was still a punt on my part. Still a mistake. So now they can just capsize the Exalted Angel and like bounce it or whatever, but I just. They can just recast it too. And they can't block with factories. So we untap. Mom is an interesting one. So I think we I think we swing with everything. Because we blow up both of the factories. I guess they capsize Millie Mage first. They can't buy back, I don't. Because then we just like sack a land and we just bounce the Palinkron and they yeah, they just don't do anything. Wow, that was awesome! This deck is sick! I love this deck. This deck is so sweet. Yes, yes, yes. This was awesome. Round number two. Let's see what's up. Sure, let's give this hand. So we have Mom, and then we have the Tide combo. We also have some removal, which is not a bad sight. Unclear what we're up against. We'll figure it out soon enough. Uh, Thursday is got uh, often likes to play prison style deck. Ancient Tomb, yes. So that's probably Mud, I would say, if I had to guess. Uh, this hand seems reasonable against Mud, I guess. That is four mana though, and a Thrun Dynamo. Well, uh, I think I'm just. I might just blowing this up. Seven mana is a lot. Uh, so this this mom is just <laughs> is just a one one. <laughs> 
So that's not great. Um, <clears throat> so let's play the seal of cleansing. But I do I blow this up? I don't think I do. I think I actually would rather fight over the real cards that can actually beat me as opposed to fighting over the mana. Like my opponent has seven mana on turn three, right? So I'm not gonna be able to to fight the fight over mana. Yep. Well, good thing I didn't. <laughs> Good thing I didn't. So I'm just going to be fighting over the actual spells that do anything. Okay. Shivan Reef. Oh, so my opponent may be actually playing Tinker here. Um, the, the Devour combo. Welder. Well, that's dead. <laughs> that is very, very dead. Pass the turn back. And we're going to get some, some good use out of these Source of Plowshares. Well, hopefully my opponent plays another Welder because we got, we got some Plows. And I still think I chill on the Seal of Cleanse. I think we just hang out here. The good thing is that like over the, the fights over creatures, we're probably going to be winning them, right? Yep. <clears throat> so that's fine. We're going to take four, I guess. Actually, mm, no, I, I don't think I want to plow the Throne Dynamo. Huh. So what I can do here is I can plow the Throne Dynamo, then Seal of Cleanse in the other Throne Dynamo. And I can actually limit my opponent's mana pretty significantly. I think I'm actually going to go for that. So let's plow there. <clears throat> then I'm going to obviously plow the car plow the Karn. Oh, Jesus, oil force source to plowshers. <laughs> so now we're going to fight over the mana after my opponent has used the City of Traders and after like they're down to only two cards. And we also have access to... Also, I, I just misclicked and I didn't play my land. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, now I can fight over the mana. Melee Mage. So I think we're just gonna name Masticore. I think Masticore is the scariest card here. Actually, not really, because my opponent doesn't have that much mana. What to name with this Melee Mage? Tinker doesn't really do anything. If they have another creature, I have that covered with Source of Plowshares. They don't have that, man that much mana for Masticore. I think the thing to name here is Golden Welder. I may be wrong on this, and maybe I should be naming Thrun Dynamo again, but like with my opponent having played two Thrun Dynamos, I don't think it's super likely. Tinker is another thing that I could see naming. Crosses is Catacomb, Smokestack. That seems fine. So here we exile nothing. And I think I just play this Tithe. And if I play this Tithe, I... Yeah, I think I just drop this Tide, and I can exile two of my opponent's lands so I can blank my opponent's smokestack. Um, actually, let's get rid of one of the land and just pass the turn back. No, actually, let's get rid of both. So now smokestack doesn't do anything. I'm just going to sit there for a while. My opponent's just not going to put counters on it. Not even playing the land. I think that is a mistake. My opponent should be playing the land. They, would, they should be forcing me to, to use my tide. Okay, so here we're gonna cast Portent on myself. And yeah, we're gonna shuffle that, I think. Any order, shuffle, play my land for three. But I think my opponent should be forcing me to, to use my counters on the tide. Because like this is basically triple time walk as it sits. And if I ever find a Stifle, obviously, then we're going to be cooking. The land that we do know about is an Ancient Tomb, though, so maybe that's why they're not playing it out. It's a terrible drop. <clears throat> but we are ahead on board. We are fairly ahead on board. Uh, would love to find any card that does stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> the nice thing about this is when the Tide comes back, the Crosses Catacombs is also going to force my opponent to bounce a land, which is hilarious. So it's it's very funny how like my opponent's playing around the combo, but in reality, I just I just cast the Tide for value. I didn't cast it for, for the combo. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, they did play the Ancient Tomb. And my best throw would be Stifle, I think. Or just another land. Another land's fine. Another land is just fine, of course. Um, very interesting. Yeah, like the pivot there is interesting. Oh, wow, really? But I can just sack the parallax style, like it doesn't do anything. So now they are putting a counter on the. All right, opponent casts Tinker. Let's see what they get. I imagine it's going to be a Masticore. 
It is Mastic Orb. So I have to plow this now because uh, otherwise, like my opponent's gonna get their lands back and they're gonna get to kill my mom for free. So Tithe goes away. They get their lands back. I was the Shiva and Reef, I assume. They're going back. They're taking three again. I think for three, I'm gonna be quarantine myself. Yeah, these are very good. All of these are very good. I guess the Silver Knight is kind of medium. So top, 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 no shuffle, play land. Next turn, we're gonna be able to just do both things. We're gonna be able to both cast the angel, just hard cast it, and to <clears throat> to do the thing with a Seal of Cleansing. Wow, great, awesome. I'm assuming this is gonna be a good matchup. And it's really funny because like we had like <laughs> all of the bad cards, <laughs> and we have like no raw, the curse totem. We have, I guess, Factor Fiction is fine. Or of silence, disenchant. Like we have some really good bangers. Um, Cataclysm is interesting, huh? Like I kind of don't like Silver Knight, but we're getting to the point where we are dangerously low on threats. I may want Blue Elemental Blast and this kind of stuff. So I, these are the cards that I'm interested in. Maybe Foth I don't need. And hmm, I'm gonna cut one tide. Actually, I'm kind of interested in cutting all of the tides because disenchant, like this kind of cards, are gonna go aimed towards my opponent's stuff. It's not gonna aim to. It's gonna not gonna be uh, comboing with my stuff. Cataclysm, I don't think is great. Probably, let's go with something like this. Let's go with something like this. Maybe fourth over wave. Silver Knight is just so bad though here. But I just need like a something that can attack. Okay, I think we keep this. I think we keep this. I don't think there's anything I want to be stifling on one. <clears throat> but depending on what they or what their draw is, if they go turn one welder, maybe I will want to plow something on one. So I guess it'll depend what I lead on. I think it's just gonna be just coastal tower past the turn back. Oof! Look at that combination. That's what we call a combo, folks. That right there is what we call a combo. Mox Diamond discarding City. Oof! Opponent is going off. Discard your hand, counter target, non creature spell. That's interesting. Well, here's a random tutu. <laughs> here's, a, here's a stupid tutu. Go. <laughs> that card is very cool, actually. I, I remember seeing this card in the past. I never actually thought of it as seeing play, but. It's kind of neat. I like it. Three mana for Tangle Wire. I think this is fine. Just tap everything. Play my island, say go. I'm gonna see if my opponent chooses to tap here. <clears throat> so they have port and tomb. Um I think I wanna impulse here. Because I it's really important for me to hit my land drop. Yeah. Let's get flooded strand. That was a, that's a good impulse, I I think. Factor fiction. Okay, that was that was neat. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, 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 okay. Um, <clears throat> so Triskelion is basically a two for one. Devour is a combo piece though, so I definitely want to split Devour and Tinker. So I think I'm gonna go like this. This is a really good fall. <laughs> this is an extremely good factor fiction. Really, really good factor. Okay, so they take Tinker Triskelion. Uh, okay, we drew Coastal Tower, that's nice. So, my opponent could potentially combo me here if they have the mill thing in their hand right now. They can just tinker away Mox and then play the Altar of Dementia and just kill me. But if they don't, we're kind of in decent shape. They can just kill in a way my dude, which is good for them, but... <clears throat> but tinker, if they tinker away the Tangled Wire, then... That unlocks my mana. So yeah, unless they combo me out right now, I think we're gonna be in fine shape. But I could very easily just lose. Okay, there's the Tinker. For Winter Orb. Wow, well, that's good. Well, now I would love to, fire, to have that Seal of Cleansing that I just sent to the bottom. <clears throat> they didn't port me, which is interesting. <clears throat> so now they're gonna port, no port, huh. So I'm not going to play the Exalted Angel knowing that my opponent has his Triskelion in hand. So I think we just chill here. They fall again. Gross. 
Okay. Whew. Let's throw some Magnus in there. Um, man, these foffs are destroying me. Um, well, Winter Orb doesn't matter because I, can't, I don't have an answer to this one. So the redundant one doesn't really do anything. So I want to put it with the land because it doesn't add anything to this. So I guess I can go like this. Also, Tangle Wire plus Winter Orb is devastating, I guess. I can potentially beat that with Stifle, but... So with that, do I just want to leave the Tangle Wire by itself and just like split like this? I think this is better for me, which is not to say that it's good. <laughs> I just think that it's better than my opponent having Tangle Wire plus Winter Orb, which I don't think I can beat. I don't think I can beat both of those things. Man, the, the lock is real. The lock is real. Honestly, like best case scenario is my opponent goes for Triskelion here and they just kind of tap out. Uh, like this is going to stop my clock, but I guess there, there's no reason to these, do this on end step. I can just untap and see what I'm drawing. Another land. Okay. So I guess now I can just one, two, three, four, five, six. I can just hard cast this angel. I think that's the best line for me here. And we just hope that this angel is good enough. It's not super likely that's going to be the case, but particularly my opponent having literally half of their combo in hand. But this angel is untouchable right now, unless my opponent has another Triskelion or a Masticore. They are on a two-turn clock from the angel, though. This is straight up a two-turn clock from the angel. Ugh, do they have Tinker? This, this smells like a Tinker. Russian River?! Oh my god, yeah, that's that's game. <laughs> Russian River, wow. That is insane. Well, plow the Triskelion so I don't die to it. Gonna ping me a couple of times, but yeah, this this has been brutal. Wow, Russian River, dude. I'm I'm actually so excited to see this card. I have not seen this card in so long. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, source of plowshares off the top. Okay, so they do play the altar. Untap. Ugh. All right, I've been beaten. I've been beaten. Uh, game number three. Do we want to change things for game number three? Honestly, I'm getting to the point where maybe Cataclysm is just fine. Like I'm, I'm kind of into Cataclysm now. Not into Silver Knight, however. Also, these Hydroblasts are kind of meh. No, I think let's go with this. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling Cataclysm. I'm really feeling Cataclysm here. Can we go turn three R of Silence? Can, can, can we just, can we just have that? Maybe a Tide for a Stifle. Stifle uh, actually counters my opponent's combo, to be fair. So if they're going for the um, Altar plus Devourer combo, we can just like my opponent like activates the whole thing. Oh no, that's that's just not true. No, that, that's true. Yeah. So they they just go for the combo and then they actually sack the devourer, and we can stifle that trigger. We can stifle the mill trigger from the from the altar. Definitely gonna be on the play. This hand looks strong. We're gonna keep it. Shout out to to these coastal towers. They have been they have been quite good because they've been on my opening hand and I can just play them on turn one. <laughs> Sphere of Resistance. Let's play a land and say go. Maybe I should have played a Darker Wastes there. Winter Orb. Okay. I think that's fine. Um, I think I passed the turn back and I'm just going to disenchant on end step. Hmm. I'm tapping Shivan Reef instead of Ancient Tomb. Very interesting. I think I'm just blowing up the Winter Orb on end step. Because I can kind of play just fine through the sphere. Untap. Mm. Let's drop a seal. Honestly, the factor fictions were the were the really big deal last game. Two mana, bounce, catacombs. So all the stuff cost one more mana. That's something to keep in mind here. So they actually can't Triskelion here. They can't cast Devourer. That's why I'm not blowing up the sphere. It's because it's actually doing some, some amount of work for me. Another Winter Orb. Okay, well that's, I guess that one's getting blown up. Oop. Obviously we, we can't win without, without our mana, right? So so that's portent myself. See what's on top of the deck. Impulse, Tide, Strength. Impulse, Tide, Strength. Is that good enough? Is that good enough? 
I don't think so. So we're just gonna shuffle here. I'm just gonna port on myself once again. Uh, all this seems tempting. Okay, so if we keep this, we're gonna draw all three of these because I have two triggers from portent. I think these are better than my average. So we're just going to say any order, no shuffle. And again, it's any order because we can't cast any spells. And we'd love to have seen a seal in any of these cards. Would have loved to have seen a seal. Or like, or I guess we use this enchant, so it would have needed to be seal. But Cataclysm sounds very sexy. So just holding on to that Cataclysm, I think it's going to be quite valuable. Tangled Wire would be mildly annoying. I think I'm just not going to play out this land because my hope is that I can Cataclysm. Masticore. So this is, this is card advantage for me, so that's nice. So I'm just going to pass the turn back. I'm just going to have my opponent discard on upkeep. Discard Mishra's Helix. And I think I'm just going to take four here. Just going to take some hits from this Masticore because it doesn't really matter. Thrawn Dynamo does matter a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I think we just untap. Curse Totem. Sure. So now that blanks the Masticor, the region response. Good. Would, be, would have been much happier if this were a Null Rod instead of a Curse Totem, but it is what it is. Again, a bonus to discard an upkeep. Altar is gone. So we take some beatings here. Tangled Wire. Okay, so now I'm actually going. Actually, do I? I, don't, I think we just pass, we just pass again. We tap four lands, and I can get one more card out of this Masticore, Meddling Mage. Play my land, <clears throat> and now we get get a card out of this Masticore, which is nice. Four mana, five mana. This is a fourth. That's a fourth, all right. Okay, so Mox Diamond goes i mean this card is nothing right like this card doesn't matter because i have cataclysm so i want to split the lands so i guess i want to split like this maybe cross this catacombs is a better land than these so yep this looks good to me this was not the best fall i've ever seen so excited about that my opponent's got island mox diamond port discarding mox diamond they tap their stuff and i think this turn i'm finally Plowing the Masticore. They play the Catacombs. Okay, so we didn't know about that. Um, yeah. Enough is enough, Mr. Masticore. Enough is enough. Okay, so one, two, it's an island. So if I Cataclysm now, yeah, I don't think I just have to just yet. So we're gonna Meddling Mage, and I think, what do we name? So their creatures don't really do anything. Altar of Dementia doesn't really do anything either. So what matters at this point? Factor of Fiction, really? Am I really naming Factor of Fiction? Tinker? I think I'm gonna name Tinker. Because it's more likely my opponent finds Tinker than Winter Orb at this point. And I think we are right now in a spot where I may fire off this Cataclysm if I get the chance to. Because I have to tap two things. I can tap Curse Totem and Meddling Mage. Yeah, Foth is brutal. Um... So, Smokestack, I don't think I care about. Welder, I don't care about either. But I'm going to try to make it as if I cared about the Welder. So I'm going to put Welder and Keg together. Or I think Welder and Smokestack, actually. So, best case scenario, my opponent keeps this pile. They keep Mox Diamond and they play the Mox Diamond. No, they kept Welder Smokestack. So this is just great for me, I think. One, two, three, four, five. So I can just tap these two things. Actually, I think we don't tap the creature because I would like to start racing now. One, two, okay. And now we Cataclysm. And my opponent's not gonna get their mana too messed with. So choose a creature, choose an artifact, choose a land. Done. Opponent chooses a creature. And they have, they have a tough choice with what, how to choose a land. And an artifact. They choose the Cross's Catacombs instead of Ancient Tomb. Very interesting. Are they going to try to go for Smokestack things? These, I think, are the correct choices. So any order is fine. I'm pretty sure that was a pretty good Cataclysm there. And we're going to hope to impulse into... My hope here is to impulse into some sort of land. Into some sort of um, disenchant effect. 
Play Shivan Reef, which is a card I did not know about. Smokestack is fine. So this is not going to make me sack anything the first time around. And I don't care about the point. So let's impulse here. That's what I was looking for. Perfect. <clears throat> so if I seal here, what do I seal? Well, that's, that's a great one. So because what I can do is I can seal the Thrawn Dynamo. And then on my upkeep, I plow the welder. I think I want to do that. So we seal the Thrawn Dynamo. On my upkeep, I plow the welder and then just sack the curse totem. I guess I could also Hydroblast the welder or whatever so they don't gain life. That, that seems that's better, actually. So if they want to do smoke stack things, this I think is just fine. They can't have Tinker, but their mana is pretty limited. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we can't... Hmm, let's think about this. Three mana. I think they're trying to cast Tinker, but they can't. Oh, no, they're casting something. Rushing River? Gross. Sacking a land. So we're going to Hydroblast the Welder. So they can put something big into play here. I don't know what that something big is going to be. But that that Rushing River is obviously pretty devastating here. It forces me to sack a land, which is what I was trying to avoid at all costs. They should probably get back... Uh, Oh, their Masticor is gone. So I guess they should get back Thrun Dynamo. Getting back Mishra's heal. Interesting. Okay. Land is great. So now we get to just play the Seal of Cleansing. Man, what a what a game. What a crazy, crazy game. Blow up your Helix. Untap. Uh, so we definitely need to see some, some lands here. Um, don't care about Masticor. I guess I don't care about Tinker anymore now. So do I just think Factor Fiction? They're down two Factor Fictions. Don't care about creatures. Don't really care about the combo. I could also name Rushing River. If I name Rushing River, that means my mage cannot really be... Act I think I'm gonna name Factor Fiction. Five mana for Karn. Plow the Karn. <laughs> Same for two. These source of Plowshares have been MVPs. Oh, Triskelion would be bad here for me. Ugh, vomit. Well, um, I mean, I, I can just force the issue here to not have the source of pleasures. Oh, that's big. So now they have to kill the mage now. So we can stop my opponent's clock on this source of pleasures, but now they can actually cast factor fiction and stuff. <sighs> Welder is big. So do I just have to? I think I just have to. I think I just have to kill the Welder here, even with the Curse Totem, because if I miss a land drop, we just lose. Yeah. Okay, so I, I may get just beaten down by a 2-2, which is pretty brutal. So I have to draw what? Oh, that's a really good draw. Oh, that's a really good top deck. Oh my god. All right, here's a land. Ugh. I'm dying here. Do we have a whiff? Man, what a match. This has been an amazing match. Port my land. Land? Source of Plowshares. Yes! Get that 2-2 two -two out of here. <laughs> Get that stupid 2-2 two -two that I can't beat out of my face. <laughs> okay, now time to draw some lands. Yes! We're doing it. We are doing it. Actually, we have exactly one more fetchable now that I think about it. That's a lot of mana. I'm really scared. Devourer. So that's a 1-1. One -one. But this means I get to play a 2-2. <laughs> this means I get to play a 2-2 versus your 1-1. One -one. <laughs> this is so silly. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, I should have flipped the other angel. That was my bad. Yeah, flipping the other angel was much better than what I just did. I thought that there was a Cursed Totem in play because I'm staring at two in my hand, but actually these Cursed Totems are not in play, they're in my hand. Um, so if I activate in response, uh, it's not very good. So I guess I'm just gonna tap four lands here. I guess I can tap like no raw and like two lands. So if I swing, how do I get blown out? If I just tap no raw three lands and I swing for four, putting my opponent down a one. Even if they have fling, I don't lose. So I guess that's the play. Unfortunately, I can't pay four mana and also, okay. So I get stabbed and now I have to tap one, two, three, four. 
I'm gonna attack with one of them because it's this is lethal regardless next turn. Because now I only have to tap three things, so I can just flip my angel and then. And my opponent doesn't get a chance to with the way morph works. My opponent doesn't get a chance to actually um, to flip things around. Uh, they don't get a chance to to like respond to the flipping. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna so one two, one two three. We'll just force the chump. I guess I can't really flip unless they make the mistake of fourteen before, because now I can do one two three four flip tap one two three attack for lethal. So now I can just tangle wire the other three things. I can't believe we got there. This game, th this match was insane. Just finishing the, just a casual turn 23 end of the match. That is ridiculous. This was awesome. Dude, pre-modern is so sick. I love this format and I love this deck so, so much. Okay, round number three. This hand looks great. We can go turn one mom, turn two melee mage. What are we up against? Elves? Okay, so this is Elves. Maybe a tricky matchup on the draw. I would feel a lot more comfortable if we had been on the play. But let's see. So obviously we're going to lead on Mom. Now that we drew Medley Mage, this is going to be very interesting here. Because if my opponent doesn't survival me on two, we can just name survival one of these mages. And then probably name... What do we name the other one? Symbiote? Why would Symbiote? Or... Multani Sacolite? I don't even know. If my opponent wants to trade, I'm trading. Attack. I dare you. I dare you to attack. Oh, they're playing Stompy. All right. All right. <laughs> I got got. I got got. Um, all right. So that's much different than I was expecting. So uh, we're definitely going to play Medley Mage over here. And we're now going to name Survival. <laughs> Um, what can we name then? Like, my opponent played the nothing on turn two. They play absolutely nothing. So, what could their hand be? Rancor? Um, they could have some amount of land grants. They could have... Actually, there could be more giant growths, honestly. There could be more giant growths. There could be no rogue elephant, because my opponent would have cast it. So... I guess if they had Rancor, my opponent would have also cast it, so... Is Rancor still the best card, though? I think I'm just gonna name Giant Growth again. Um, yeah, because even if my opponent does have a Rancor, I guess we can just mess with it if we need to. This is not gonna have many targets. So the ideal draw would be a Parallax Wave. I feel like if we draw a Parallax Wave, we're gonna be in really, really good shape. But that that's a tricky Medley Mage right there. I don't think it's... I don't think there's ne there's anything that's necessarily very obvious. Huh, so they could have River Boa last turn, but they didn't, which is very interesting. And uh, that's actually a pretty good draw there. Just first strike is kind of busted here. Um, yeah, I think we're playing this. And I guess uh, what what other pump spells could I put him? There's I guess Bounty of the Hunt is another. Pump spell that they oftentimes play. So bounty of the hunt is of the hunt is interesting. Um I think I'm blocking with Medley Mage over here. I value the Silver Knight higher than the Medley Mage, because we obviously have another mage, so we don't care that much if this one happens to to move on to, to a better life. But yeah, obviously now that I know what my opponent is on, uh, like the the charm block with the mom, like the trade with the mom, or like the attempt to trade with the mom. Looks horrible. <laughs> yep, there it is. Bounty of the Hunt. Exiling Land Grant. So we're going to get a trade here. And then a pump there. Because I think these, this get removed, right? Is that how that works? But the damage doesn't? Since it's cleanup step. Oh, but the damage goes out in cleanup step? That's super weird. <laughs> well, I... That is super weird. Um, well, we're going to play this Medley Mage over here. And I think I want to name, let's name a giant growth again. Because if my opponent has bounty of the hunt, they don't have a green card to pitch to it anymore. So, and I think I actually want to play out the dust bowl and play the seal of cleansing as opposed to playing coastal tower. And the reason for doing this is if I do draw parallax uh, wave, a parallax tide, I guess, then we can, like we can just combo next turn instead of having to wait until the following turn. 
and just exile all of my opponent's creatures. This rogue elephant is kind of a beating though, so we can deal with the boa, because like the, we we deal first strike damage. Lock there. Hello. Oh, island walk. Oh, that's brutal. I just realized that. Well, I have to be careful about that. <laughs> Take five. Um, and I guess we have like two turns to draw Parallax Wave. Uh, maybe I should have actually double blocked the Rogue Elephant. Now that I think about it. I, honestly, I was not thinking about River Boa. I'm fortunate that I can't... Oh, I can't... Oh, you know what we can do? We can like Dust Bowl targeting, I guess, my Dust Bowl and sacrifice my island. Just so I can block the River Boa. Is that worth doing? At this point, my brain has three cards in hand, which is kind of annoying. So I guess that's probably worth doing. Sacrifice a land, destroy target non-basic land. And I'm going to sack the island. And I can still cast anything that I draw, with the exception of specifically Exalted Angel. But now I can just start blocking the River Boa. My opponent could have another Bounty of the Hunt, which would be terrible, but... But yeah, but this is just like a regeneration. This like actually buys me a sizable amount of time because this is how the first strike damage happens first. And even if the, the river boa is still alive, regeneration removes the boa from combat. So it actually doesn't deal damage to the silver knight. Now we untap and <sighs> punished. <laughs> but, 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 but we're going to get to flip this. And now we're going to start to race very effectively. I don't think that I attack with the Medley Mage because I want to have the option of blocking their Lanoware Elf. But we are going to be taking some damage from this Rogue Elephant. Does Rancor do anything? Um, hmm. It's actually kind of interesting. Does Rancor do anything here? We do have the Seal of Cleansing, but then my opponent gets to like replay their stuff or whatever. So they do attack again. I think I'm double blocking. So my opponent's going to get to kill one or the other, but not both. I guess they could have another Bounty of the Hunt plus green card in hand. That would be pretty bad for us. Yeah, that's a Bounty of the Hunt, all right. Yep. So this is a 5-5. Five, five. So it kills both of my things. And I take three. I guess now I get to flip the Angel to stop my opponent from attacking. Like, that's so random that this gets like plus one, plus one counters. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh... So I guess we just block and we lose to like giant growth or whatever. So we're gonna, if we block here, we take five, but we gain four up to eight. So if my opponent has a giant growth, we lose. But if they, if I block here and they giant growth, they rock grow the, the elephant, I also just lose. Um, so I guess I, but this place, I guess if there's bounty of the hunt, it doesn't matter. So I guess this plays around Berserk better, but I cannot beat Giant Growth. So, flip this. Hope for the best. Ooh, that just happened? Well, that's wild. Also, I just realized that Exalted Angel is actually a triggered ability. I forgot about that. <laughs> so good thing that I blocked like this, because I thought it was like... Um, I thought it was like a Lifelink, but it, it isn't. It very much is not. So put an out of cards. So I think I'm just, because I drew Silver Knight, which is an insane draw over here, I'm just going to start attacking now. But yeah, a fantastic draw with that Silver Knight. Now we go up to nine. We get to drop the Knight and then... So now what we can do is we can Seal of Cleansing a Rancor and they're stifled the, the going back to Hunt Trigger, which is great. No attacks. So the ground's locked up with the Knight. <laughs> Another Seal of Cleansing. And then... to the Angel. Like, I, I love this card so much. I think this is actually my favorite card in all of Premodern. If it's not my favorite, it's like, I don't know, top two, alongside maybe Survival. It's such a cool card. Tenda Lion. <laughs> That's, well, not great against the, the blue deck, I guess. <laughs> Can we give a shout out to the Dust Bowl play from like five turns ago or whatever? Yeah, we're not playing that one. Um... Yeah, that was, that was cool. Big fan, big fan of uh, the, the Dust Bowl line from like however many turns ago. We would have, we would have very easily lost if I hadn't done that. Sky Shroud Elite. So one mana, two, three. Is that going to be strong enough? Probably not. Just one angel soloing my opponent straight up. 
Spay blue. Say yes. And I'm just gonna... I guess my opponent has got infinite mana, so I'm just gonna block the Druid Lyrist. It's gonna take four. Pass the turn. Untap. Just five attacks of Exalted Angel. What else? What else do you need? Just five attacks of the Angel. Moving on to the next game. That, that was wild. That's awesome. Okay, so we... I think I like Cataclysm and Parallax Wave. Both of these look fantastic. Um... How do we feel about disenchant effects? How do we feel about Curse Totem? Does Curse Totem do anything at all? We can play Curse Totem and I guess that stops their mana creatures. Stops Druid Lyrist. Stops what else? I don't know what else. I'm never I think I'm just cutting the tides here. I, I'm not gonna be fighting over the mana, I'm just gonna be fighting over the creatures. Um not a fan of the impulse. I don't think we're gonna just, just gonna have that much time to like dirtle. Um, like I don't think on the draw we're gonna have the time to be able to spend our turn to casting impulse. So I think we need to fight to have a way to actually interact with the board in a meaningful way. The thing is, I don't think we have anything that can do that. So I think the impulse is just gonna stay because of mostly because of lack of better options. Uh, we have some really good cards though. We have like all of these are bangers. Like every single one of these cards is an absolute banger. Uh, Stifle Lancer's Rancor, in a way, so I think it's worth having. I guess Aura of Silence is kind of an answer to Rancor, because it makes my it forces my opponent to pay, to pay 3 to cast and recast the, the, um, the Rancor. I think I'm just gonna go with Impulse over the Aura, though. Like, Aura seems so slow. See, and looks fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And I have, a, like, a non-island blue source, which is great. So we can go turn one basic planes, turn two. I guess we just fetch for a second planes. We're not gonna, unless I want a melee mage on two. Am I gonna want to melee mage? On two? I guess it depends on how things go. But I may just not even cast mage on two. Just hold up plow. Keep this. Let's see what my opponent's gonna call. Turn one, nothing. Wow. So we're getting to the board before my opponent. Get... Okay, like this. This is just incredible. Yeah, this draw is just. I don't think my opponent's gonna be able to beat this draw. Winter Orb. Sure. Okay. So my opponent's trying to play the long game here. Oof. That's a good one. Um, I kind of want a melee mage anyway. What beats me here? I, I definitely want to cast melee mage here. But what beats me? There's actually not that many things that beat me here. So I just named like the beefiest creature so I can, like, I force my opponent to like go wide versus a parallax wave. So the beefiest creature, I guess, is going to be... What's it going to be? I don't think... I, I don't like this winter over my opponent. Like I, I think that they just... They just misevaluated what I'm playing. Maybe they're thinking that I'm playing more of a control deck, when in reality I'm playing kind of like the solution. I am, I'm playing like efficient answers to their stuff. So like it's it's not that good for them to winter over. Um, I think I just named Giant Growth. I think I just named Giant Growth. And obviously now I'm just not going to attack with this mom, right? This mom just going to stay on defense for the remainder of the game. Two mana for River Boa. Okay. Boom. <laughs> Another melee mage. Uh, I'm not going to play it though, because that would require me to fetch for an island we're interested in doing. This is looking good here. I think we're in pretty good shape. And my opponent can't really attack, because we have mom protection, and if they spend their time regenerating then they can't actually develop their board. So this Winter Orb is doing some pretty good work for me, <laughs> oddly enough. But I like naming the spell because by naming the spell, I'm forcing my opponent to play into the board where I can just blow them out. So I think this Medley Mage is going to name Rancor. Although I don't really care about Rancor. Yep. And this is why I don't care about Rancor. Get my two for one over here. And now I'm in just extremely good shape, right? Tap. Uh, I guess I want to untap that because I can play the Medley Mage now named Bounty of the Hunt. Uh, I could play Exalted Angel, but I think I'm just gonna just gonna play Mage named Bounty and just swing with Mage. And we're just going to, to we're gonna ride this Winter Orb to victory. <laughs> just gonna ride this Winter Orb to victory. Pouncing Jawar. <laughs> oh, brutal! Pouncing Jawar into the Winter Orb. Now we get full info, we know my opponent has <laughs> literally both cards that we're naming. Oh my god, this is brutal. I'm sorry, opponent. <laughs> I'm, 
I have to say, I, I am very proud. I am very, very proud of my meddling mage prowess. I think I am pretty good at, at naming stuff with meddling mage. Gonna get pro green here, if opponent wants to block. This is a chump block because both both of their pump spells are, are named. So I think that's gonna be game. Like honestly, our deck seems like a nightmare matchup for the stomp. Like an absolute nightmare. We have like all of these, also like this hand was insane, right? But like we have mom, which it seems like they really struggle against. We have like multiple plows. Yeah, that, that, that looked very good. That looked very, very good. Round number four. Um, I'm gonna keep this hand because Portent is actually quite strong here. We can find a white source and then that's going to enable my entire hand. Portent, let's do it. That's another Arcor Wastes. So I think we keep that. So um, we're gonna go top, top, top. No, this plays better against like a random bland Caval Therapy naming Mother of Runes, <laughs> which is not very likely, but who knows. All right, here's a mom. We'll see if we get to untap with this mom. Is this the rock? Mesmeric Fiend. Well, they have to take Plow. Don't think they have too many other options, which means we're gonna get result. We're gonna get to resolve Exalted Angel, which is nice, and then we can protect it. And if this is indeed the rock, uh, Exalted Angel is. We could get owned if they have exactly Engineered Plague. Um, wait. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um. Well, I mean, this probably means that they don't have an answer to an to an angel, right? So, because otherwise they would have really wanted me. To just play out to just play out that so i think we just pass the turn here and this gets got by deed specifically in this turn but it's just so such a better play versus deed on literally any other turn so i think this is worth doing and now we have angel protected by mom so if we draw any land we're gonna be in really really good shape just gotta draw any land at all survival okay so we may be playing against the combo version of of the rock which i don't remember how it would its name uh that's land so flip this right now and get in there and i guess i'm just gonna tie the next turn and just lock my opponent's green mana and just beat them down with an exalted angel my opponent's not gonna have that much time to to play the long game here we can plow this and drop another angel. I'm not even sure I want to do that. I think just playing Tide seems... Just play Tide to get two of their resources. Squee Goblin Nabob. So they're going to get a bunch of card advantage. The question is, will that matter at all? Because we have STP. Also, not only my opponent is taking a bunch of damage from the Llanowar Wastes. Mesmeric Fiend. So I imagine this one's going to take Source of Plow. Yep. No attack is interesting. I guess they can't punish me. That's a really good draw. That is a very, very good draw. Man, I've been drawing like, I've been drawing just extremely, extremely well. <laughs> I don't think I, I can complain about my draws. So do this now, see if this resolves. If they naturalize, I get to exile all of their cards. So it doesn't seem great for them. Palinkron. Get your wastes. Discarding Palinkron. Okay. I think I'm just gonna get all of this lands here. Okay. Get, get Whale. Take that land too. And take that land too for good man. I don't want my opponent to be able to do rest me or something. Or like just play another Mesmeric Fiend, right? So now they can't play lands. So if I want to guarantee that my opponent is not gonna get their lands back. I, I mean, I, I'm just gonna untap here. I think it's just better to just let this fading go away. So that's a mom, that's a silver knight. So I guess if my opponent has exactly... So what I could have done is I could have, on my end step, just exile one of my lands so the Parallax Tide went away on that very turn. So if my opponent has exactly duress now, they're gonna get my stifle and that's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty bad for me. But I also have lethal on board as it stands. So I guess they're gonna have four mana on their turn, on my turn, but uh, it's unclear whether that's actually gonna do anything at all. I mean, I'm obviously gonna do it anyway, but 
So now we stifle the tight trigger, give this pro black. We get in there for lethal. Game one in the books. Um, so my opponent's deck requires it requires um, both the graveyard and um, survival to win. So I like the crypt. I like furnace. Do I like cataclysm? I think I like wave. Wave seems good. Do I care about Cursed Totem? Mm. Let's get rid of the Tides. Tom script. I kind of want the Cataclysm. I think I, I think the Cataclysms are good. Maybe cut a couple of Silver Knights. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, sure. Let's keep this. Uh, do I want to... I guess I don't even know what I'm looking for with Portent just yet. So I'm just going to lead on Coastal Tower, I think. Tournament Birds is strong. Can I afford to go turn one Coastal Tower though? Because then on turn two, I'm gonna. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna portend. I think I'm gonna fall too far behind otherwise. Uh, yeah, well, good thing I did, because I definitely wanna shuffle those away. Now we untap. Hopefully, we draw something better. Flooded Strand. Okay. I mean, it's not great, but it's also not the worst. So now we get to drop Seal next turn, which answers that survival right there. Hopefully, we dodge it the rest. Looks like we did. Excellent. Excellent. So let's play Skycloud Expands, Seal, and I guess I'm gonna see if they activate Survival on End Step, but I'm definitely gonna Survival on Upkeep. Huh, they just let it go. So they probably have another Survival, which is bad for me, obviously. Yep, very bad for me. Quite, quite bad for me. We also drew every land possible, <laughs> so that, that is also not great. Uh, so I guess we're just gonna Fully a morphed angel. I wonder if my opponent's playing stuff like facelet, Faceless Butcher. I really hope that they're not, because that would be a problem. Oh, they have no creature in hand, so they can't actually activate the survival. Therapy. Well, there's no name there. <laughs> there's no way they're hitting with this one, so. If they name Impulse, I'm going to be extremely, extremely impressed. <laughs> no Impulse named. Great. <laughs> All right. They are going for it here. Sacking the bird. It's kind of greedy. I mean, Impulse is great. Don't get me wrong. Like, Impulse is actually quite good here. It can potentially allow me to disrupt my opponent. But at the same time, devastating. Well, here goes nothing, I guess. Here's an angel, and it's coming in for four damage. <laughs> Here's my angel. My angel is amazing. Steal no creature from for my opponent. That's brutal. So I guess we're gonna have Dust Bowl do its thing. Oh, Bone Shredder? Just like naturally top deck Bone Shredder. Ugh, brutal. So I guess I'm gonna Dust Bowl their wastes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is happening, I guess. I mean, if, if they fail to find a creature one more turn and they find an answer to the survival, we may be we may be in this game still. That's pretty mind-blowing, to be honest, the amount of lands that I've drawn here. Another waste, which I'm gonna blow up. Taking one. Bone Shredder getting BC. Tormod script. Okay, I guess we're doing that. I think we're this, uh, we're sacking the waste here because I really want to play the Coastal Tower this turn. I don't think I'm going to need that much blue mana. Ugh, they drew a, they drew a creature. For Skellion, getting discarded. The good thing is this script is just going to sit in play for a little bit. And it doesn't require me to hold up mana or anything. They did get Squee. Do they have another Squee? Why, were, why are they doing this in the face of the crypt? Maybe this is bait, but the problem is I can't, I can't really afford to not take the bait, right? Because they're going to start doing squee things otherwise. So if they get a second squee, I'm, I'm kind of screwed. Like if they have two squees, it's just a problem, but kind of is what it is. But yeah, we have to crack the crypt here. Elder is pretty sexy there. I love me some yeah, my Elder action. Look at the value. Just, just good value. Just... Honest, good value. Good card. <laughs> alright, alright. I am getting I am getting punished for how well I drew the previous game, I guess. So even if they play um, another dual land, I don't think I activate Dust Bowl here because I can just hard cast an angel if I draw 
if I draw it. Yeah, so there's the robber. Angel off the top. Cataclysm! I just don't think this Cataclysm is very good. Like, they just keep... They keep robber in survival and the forest, and they draw two lands. Now, I don't think this is a good Cataclysm, actually. I think I'm going to pass it back. I'm not going to play the land, because I can cast anything that I want anyway. And even next turn, if I need to, like, disenchant survival into Cataclysm, I can just... I'm going to take five here. I'm going to look for a better spot for this Cataclysm. Maybe my opponent will commit something else to the board. Or we just get destroyed. <laughs> or maybe we just get destroyed. Well, they sack the Elder. Get a couple of forests. Play one of them out. Parallax Wave. I don't think that does anything. So I'm, I think I'm just better off hiding that information. And learning more about my opponent's deck. Discarding Bird on my end step to get another feed. Okay, I think I've seen enough. I think I've seen enough. Um, am I just... I think I, I may just need this enchant over one of these Cataclysms. Maybe Foth? Like this game, like that game was super grindy, so maybe just Foth is fine. Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm kind of off the Cataclysm game plan. Now we get to be on the play. Decent draw. Keep this. Turn one planes as the turn. If they have turn one therapy into plow, we are gonna be very sad, but otherwise looking pretty fine. If this is a bird, it's getting it's getting plowed here. And the reason to do that it's because um it makes my seal of cleansing that much better. Also it gives me the time to play this knight and like put a threat on the board. Obviously, this is far and away my worst possible threat, so that's not great, but I think that we get like a little bit of a, we get to capitalize on the tempo here. Wall of Blossoms, uh, that sucks. <laughs> there goes my game plan. Uh, okay, so we're gonna portent here and shuffle those away. Any order and shuffle. Drop the seal of cleansing and pass the turn back. <laughs> Another land, okay. Are we, gonna, are we going down this path once again? Hopefully not. Hopefully not going down this path. Oof, so many walls. Well, th there's no way they don't name Source of Plushers, which is the brutal part about this. So this is going to be like a blind, blind hit, and then they're going to get value from the wall. Hopefully they name something that's not STP, and then they flash back. But I, I, I think that the only thing that makes sense here is, like, okay, Cataclysm is what Well, good. It's not in my deck anymore. <laughs> Not in my deck anymore. Also, it wouldn't be great here. I'm, I'm very surprised they named Cataclysm there. Also, they should just flash back right now, I think. Because everything else, I'm just casting. So. Like, they're not going to get a better Source of Blushers name. Yeah, they, they just have to do it now. Because they're never going to get, like, a better... It's not like they're ever going to get a two-for-one, a two for one, right? Because if they do that, then I just... They flash back next turn, and I just plow the other wall in response. So they're, they're just not going to get a better chance, a better spot for that. Here's mom, she said, decent draw. Like, I wouldn't say like it's an amazing draw or anything, but it's a reasonable draw. Maybe I shouldn't have cut the tides. Kind of regretting cutting the tide. So here my opponent has perfect info, and I'm gonna play the Dust Bowl, because if they play a land I wanna blow up, and I draw exactly Coastal Tower, I would like to just have that. And I don't have anything past double blue, so there's no real cost to, to doing wastes. It's just to play the waste, I mean. I'm not super high on our current spot, though. Okay, play Dust Bowl, and I guess we're gonna pass the turn once again. I guess if my opponent has Bone Shredder, that would kind of suck. Not too much that we can do about that, but we got Survival Cover. That would love to draw an Angel. Engineer the Plague on Human is devastating. So that's just a clean two for one. But if I find an Angel, then I'm gonna stifle. <laughs> okay. Um, things are not going well for the good guys here. Opponent's got four cards in hand, up, now up to five. We have a bunch of lands that don't really amount to anything. It's a bird of paradise. And <laughs> coastal tower. Okay. So, funnily enough, if I do end up drawing an angel, I am going to not hard cast it, even though I could if I wanted to. Triskelion. Okay. I'm probably going to have to 
blow that one up at some point. Uh, but the reason to do that is, I mean, now that they have a Dress Colony, probably not, but like I can, I can, ooh, it's so blow that up. It's gonna kill my knight in response. I'll take a couple of points of damage. Then I'm gonna play Mage naming Survival. So Triskelion down, cast Mage, their name Survival of the Fittest. If they have Second Plague, obviously, we probably we probably just die, but uh, but yeah, it's nice that we get to stifle things if we need to. Angel, it's a land. Child play out, it's not great. Uh, I'm not gonna crack this strand just yet, however, because I may want to portent. That's a lot of lands. So what are my good draws here? My good draws are Angel is my best draw by a lot. Um, STP. So if I plow this Wall of Blossoms, we can start attacking, I guess. Maybe that's just not a good play, but we'll see. That's also three Swords of Plowshares gone, by the way. Maybe I should have held on to that Swords. I'm kind of regretting. Because I feel like I'm not winning without drawing an Exalted Angel. Second Engineer Plague, Recurrent Nightmare. Woof! Woof, woof, woof. Well, there's that, I guess. So now any creature just beats me. I mean, I have to stifle this. Otherwise, I just lose to the Triskelion, so... So now any creature at all off the top beats me. So I kind of need to draw another Medley Mage to name Recurrent Nightmare. Okay. Swing. Now the question is, I think... I mean, there's no way my opponent plays into... There's no way they play into the the Seal of Cleansing, right? But, I mean, if, if I put the Seal of Cleansing out, I'm forcing them to play around it, so... I think it's better to hold this. Angel. Another source of plowshares, okay. All right. Uh, this is not looking good for me. This is not looking good for me. We, uh, we have survival cover, though. Okay, now that we have two seals, I am happy enough blowing up the Engineer Plague. Like, that's probably going to happen, event need to happen eventually, and this shortens the clock. Although, maybe that's bad if my opponent actually did have any form of... Oh, they did have another plague. Interesting. Well, I'm not blowing that one up. Definitely naming human as well. Mom. Okay, so I guess mom is a good enough... Oh, it, it actually isn't, though. Because mom can just get killed by a Triskelion. So, yeah, this is just bad. We're in really bad shape here. <laughs> uh, you know what the worst part is? Like, this was actually a freaking... <laughs> Um, in the original list, this was, um, Mishra's Factory. Okay, I think we're doing this. I think I have to blow this up and I have to play Mom just so I can attack with the Mom, which is awkward. And any land just means uh, Triskelion effectively wins the game for my opponent. So we're in really bad shape here. We flooded pretty significantly, but it's okay. I mean, it's not okay. We're gonna very likely lose this game. Maybe we get extremely lucky for whatever reason. Okay, so we're gonna untap here. There's no real use in wastelanding this now. Stifle is interesting, and I think we're just jamming. We're just attacking because this is a this is a four turn clog as is. Yeah, I was considering whether there's a reason to like sack an anarcher waste or something to the dust bowl instead of wastelanding, but with the amount of mana that I have access to, I don't think that's the case. So this Stifle can counter one Recurrent Nightmare activation. Cobalt Therapy. It's not much I can do about this, so there he goes. <sighs> Therapy's so sick. Source to Plowshares has been named. That's Source to Plowshares number four. That is Source to Plowshares number four. And again, I have Portents in my deck, so I don't think that I should be cracking this. Level. That's kind of big. That's very big, actually. That's huge, in fact. <laughs> Let me rephrase a little bit. That is a huge draw. That is a massive, massive draw. Can we actually win this game? And I'm definitely not fighting over this squee. Like, Survival is named with Medley Mage. So, I'm fighting over... Um, yeah, this is fine. I'm fighting over whatever my opponent wants to get back here. Cabal Therapy. That's, so, that's going to name Stifle. I don't know if I should have stifled the trigger there. 
If I just cycle the, the draw trigger from the Wall of Blossoms. But if they're recurring, I just exile probably through Scallion. I assume that's what they're, they're going to try to get back. Too bad I didn't have one more turn for this. Here we go. I mean, they have to do it now, because otherwise they don't force me to sack the, the Furnace. So, Exile Triskelion. Draw Medley Mage. That's big. That is big. Wow, okay. So, we're going to name Recurrent Nightmare here. And I don't think we attack with the, med with the Mom now. So, this punishes me severely. Oh, what I can do is I can just wave my own stuff away. So I think this is a fine attack because I can just parallax wave my own stuff away and use it as protection. So, oh no, it's, it's gonna come back on my upkeep, my bad. Now this, actually maybe that maybe that was wrong. Cause now if my opponent has, uh, what's his name? Bone Shredder, they can actually get me. I can't believe I got away with that. <laughs> That's so we got so lucky in that last game. Wow, that was insane. That was a sick. That was a sick. Every match has been crazy <laughs> with this deck. I love it. All right, last round. Currently 4-0. Ignore what's showing up right there. This the one that's coming up is the match that actually matter, but I'm I'm double queuing recording two different videos at the same time. Uh, this hand's great though. So we can go turn one mom. We can go turn to Silver Knight or Seal of Cleansing. Obviously, we could be playing versus decks where this is not very good. But, uh, you know, Silver Knight, fantastic versus Sly, fantastic versus other creature decks, goblins, whatnot. And then Seal of Cleansing, potentially good versus other plethora of decks. Delta into Basic Swamp, into Vendetta. Okay. So this could be like a gazillion different decks, right? Silver Knight. Let's go. <clears throat> Here's my 2-2. Mistress Factory. Mesmeric Fiend. Okay. I have no idea what my opponent is up to over there, but we're probably going to find out soon enough. Uh, Mesmeric Fiend suggests that they are not playing anything uh, similar to... Um, Mesmeric Fiend su su suggests that they're not going to be playing Innocent Blood or anything like that. Uh, so we we get in there with the Silver Knight and then play Seal of Cleansing, holding up Stifle. Don't even know what Stifle is going to be for, but Tainted Isle is not a card that you see every day. This is most definitely not a card that you see every day, and I definitely think that I'd rather pressure my opponent here. Skittering Scourge. All right, erase that. My opponent's playing some form of aggro. Uh, so I attack for two. They attack for four. If I hold back, what happens? If I hold back, what happens? They can't attack with Fiend, but I, I still take three. So I guess this attack doesn't change the clock, so, so I should attack. No, that's not true. No, I think I should actually hold back now. The Scourge really puts a ton of pressure on me. My best row would be, I guess, Swords to Plowshares. Plowshares means I get rid of the Mesmeric Fiend and I just take it from there. <laughs> I wonder if my opponent is just playing the Avatar of uh, Will deck. That would be sick. Avatar of Will is bigger than Exalted Angel, I'll say that much. It's kind of funny how this random Seal of Cleansing is keeping the factory in check. So this is uh, five turn clock now. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have any way to like double down here. Source of Plowshares is fine. <sighs> Let's think about this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to play. I, I was considering whether it's better for me to just like hold and play the the Exalted Angel later, but I think it's better for me to just plow now and just play the, the morph. I may be wrong about this, but I think this is correct. And I'm holding on to like the stifle that my post about. So they could have another Vendetta, they could have Smother. There's a, a number of things that would, would get me here, but not much I can do. I, and I think I think it's better to like try to put the pressure as quickly as I can. <laughs> if they fetch, do I stifle? I think I'm gonna play around that about Avatar of Will. So if my opponent wants to fetch, I'm just gonna let it go. Like I could stifle them, but... Uh, well, I think that I am gonna kill. So just blow it up. 
Oh, they could have a rack, a pit rack, whatever. So maybe that's why they made that attack. Yeah, I should have held on to, to the Seal of Cleansing. Now we do get to untap. So I'm just going to hold on to that. And we're just going to swing for a bunch here. My opponent knows the card in hand, so I'm just going to flip it up like that. I, I don't need to take a damage for no reason. And I'm going to hold on to the land because of... Um, I'm going to hold on to the land because uh, I I just want having access to the extra thing. Oh, well, and now... Actually, I'm going to stifle now, I think. Because I already have another card in hand. And my opponent, like, they, they're they down a land because of the factory. So, like, they actually missed a land drop last turn. Okay. Exalted Angel, too strong. Skittering Scourge. Skittering Scourge. That's a card. Okay, so... We want Foth. Definitely want Foth. Versus the deck that wants to empty our hand. Not high on Silver Knights. Not high on Silver Knights. Um, Curse Totem doesn't do anything. Noro doesn't do anything either. I guess I'm not. My, my deck list is not prepared for Av Avatar of Will. Deck, unfortunately. <laughs> I am learning right now that my deck list is just not ready for for the Avatar of Will menace. Uh, I think I want Aura of Silence, I guess. Because I'm not a big fan. I, I just really don't like the knights in the matchup. So this is Mom's. So I think Seal of Cleansing is fine. I could consider another Parallax Wave just as a way to save my creatures. Is that better than Aura of Silence? Maybe? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's... The... What do we got here? Opponents on the play. We got Portent. Yeah, okay. I can work with this, I think. I think I can work with this hand. A little bit awkward to get Island on turn one. It's not ideal. Ooh, my opponent's also Portenting. Portenting. There's no way my opponent's playing Cabal Therapy, right? So they're playing... We don't know what their blue is for. Portent is the first blue card they played so far. That's a mom. That's... That's really big if I manage to have that survive. So, like, that is, like, the only card that I think would change me not playing Portent on one. Because just, like, being able to land mom on turn one, it's such a big difference. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, we untapped with mom. Okay. So, now we portent myself. Looking for probably some lands. I could use some lands. I could... That's an island. That's great. Okay. So, I think I want to draw the two lands first. And then parallax wave last. Look at the cards. Wave. Wasteland. Island. No shuffle. Pass the turn back. And with my opponent playing Mistress Factory on turn two, I think I am going to Wasteland the Underground River. Also, there's the actual fact that they played another Underground River, which is obviously not an ideal land to be playing on turn one. So if they had any other better options than Underground River, they would have, you know, gone with one of the other options. So it makes me believe that my opponent may be a little bit low on mana over there because of the, the land sequencing that they did. So I'm just going to... Yeah, we're definitely going to waste that. Phyrexian Negator. Okay. So I guess we now pivot. And, like, I just block and give protection. And that's quite strong. I'm just going to race my opponent with, with an Exalted Angel, I think. An unkillable Exalted Angel. Man, Exalted Angel is just so sick, man. <laughs> it's just so sick. Oh my god. Such a sweet card, jeez. Such a sweet card. What is Dystopia? Okay, okay, okay. They don't attack. Interesting. So, Mom down. So I guess I can't flip the morph anymore now. So I can Wasteland the Conclave and play another morph. Seems good to me. Seems good to me. Um, he's blowing up. Huh. Is blowing up the wasteland. Is blowing up the fairy conclave better than blowing up the factory? It's close. Also, shout out to dude. Like, I I love Exalted Angel so much. Nice dystopia, right? <laughs> nice nice dystopia versus my double colorless, <laughs> my double colorless creature strategy. Um. I definitely want to wasteland. Like, I'm wastelanding something, but I'm not sure what. And there's argument for wastelanding this, just wastelanding this, and wastelanding this. 
There's the fact that apparently my opponent has double black cards. They also may have double blue cards, uh, for, for what we know. And there's also obviously the fact that Conclave clocks me in the air. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blow up the river. And now we just sit here. And I'm not attacking because I'd rather not, um, not give my opponent the option. Though maybe I should have attacked. The problem is, like, if I attack and then my opponent has, like, a removal spell for the Exalted Ninja that, that's blocking now. Okay. Skittering Scourge has been cast. Second main phase, opponent fetches. Second island. Huh. Okay. So, I guess, let's see how long you can pay for that dystopia opponent. <laughs> Parallax wave times two. Uh... I think we just pass. Um, actually, no, I think I want to portent myself. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Huh. Those are cards. Those are cards. So, Aura of Salience deals with this. Stifle can interact with this. Man, I mean, as long as this Dystopia is here, I'm not super high on doing anything though i kind of want lands oh stifle uh, combos with tide of course <laughs> what what am i even thinking about right now yeah uh, this is great yeah, this is awesome yeah uh, let's do this <laughs> um so we can i think what we're gonna do is we're going to not put stifle in my hand i think what we want to do is we want to keep stifle third from the top and Medley Mage is the one that I care the least if my opponent uh, Cabal Therapies or whatever, so we're just gonna go do that, say no, and then we're going to untap. We're gonna draw uh, an irrelevant card, doesn't matter, but what, what I care about is the Stifle, right? So what's gonna happen is we're going to be drawing, uh, what's his name here, the Medley Mage, then we're gonna draw the Aura of Silence, and then we're gonna draw the Stifle. And I think that this coming turn is going to be a Parallax Tide. I'm going to blow up all of my bonus lands. And then um, then we can take it from there. Not super impressed by the Dystopia here. Like, obviously, it, it's probably like a good card in, against me. But we're playing around it fairly easily. I'm definitely very unimpressed by the Negator. Like, this Negator is probably... I don't know if my opponent thought that this would be like a little bit more of a control. Like, this is something that we saw in a previous round as well with opponents kind of misevaluating the kind of deck that I'm playing over here and being, you know, kind of punished by that. So I think with my opponent's attack here, we're just going to tithe all of their lands away. Gonna keep that dystopia, is, that dystopia is going off. So here's a tithe. I would like to take uh, that one. And I would like to take... Uh, that one. And I would like to take that one while I'm, while I'm at it. And now I'm just going to chill here because the idea is I want to target the same thing twice. So the last trigger goes on the stack in my turn so I can stifle it. Let's see if I'm going to... Man, they just continue paying for the dystopia. I'm just going to kill them in a single swing at this rate. We're going to take three. That is us going down to... Uh, what? Eleven? Now, end step, Parallax style this, hold priority, Parallax style that. Now, they don't have any cards, we untap. Oh no, I messed this up! The stifling is not in my hand just yet. Oh, I messed this up in very big way. Whoops. Oh, I messed this, man, I got so excited. <laughs> Immediately draw the stifle, whoopsies. Um, ugh, well, that sucked. I really messed that one up. Ugh, vomit. Uh, okay, so now we have to fix my my mistake. Now we have to fix my mistake. So, time to brush it off a little bit. Time to brush it off a little bit and to think. This is the situation we find ourselves in right now. How do we make the most of it? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the turn. I'm going to pass the turn. If my opponent attacks with Fairy Conclave once again, I'm going to flip the Angel. Then I'm going to stifle the dystopia trigger and I'm going to aura of silence the dystopia. That also means that my opponent is going to be at 
That also means that my opponent is going to be at um, seven. So two attacks from Exalted Angel should do it. But yeah, that was like a, that was a big mistake. I, sh I should have just obviously not activated twice. Like that was for whatever reason I was thinking the stifle was already in my hand. Tainted Isle. Okay, so uh, flip that one. I imagine they have removals. Oh, they don't. Oh, okay. Well, there goes that. So now they have to sack four things. We gain four up to twelve, and now I don't have to do anything to this, do this dystopia. In fact, what I can do now is I can just flip the angel. Oh, they're just sacking it. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, I, I don't think... What what made my opponent switch gears there? That makes no sense. Why would they switch gears? What changed that made them want to do that? Maybe they just felt too threatened by the angels? So we saw Vendetta. We saw... We didn't see anything like Smother or whatever. I think I'm still gonna name Smother with this melee mage because it's the card that actually matters more. Oh, they're playing counter magic? Ooh, okay. All right, all right. So let's play Seal of Cleansing here and we're just gonna pass the turn back because my opponent can't really attack. Actually, wait, wait a second. So if I swing for two, no, they, they can't really attack with Negator. That would mean they have to sack their entire board. Probably not good for them. Okay, I'm gonna block there. See if my opponent wants to trade. So this means they have to sack two things. I assume they're gonna sack both of the Scourge and a... Oh, they sack Negator? Ooh, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, that makes things very easy for me now. So I can just Dust Bowl and blow up their land. And this game ended up being <laughs> a lot harder than it should have been. Um. If I play Parallax Wave, I think playing Parallax Wave is better. Because if my opponent has Mana League, they're going to use it on this. Seems good to me. Great. Okay. So, I could have also just like Dust Bowl the land. That would have been another decent option. Uh, now, now I can't really mess around though. Now I actually have to, you know, source the Blushers this thing. Can't get got by another Mana League. But now if they do the rest or whatever, like whichever one of these they get, like just kill this with the other one. So unless they have a, a way to pump, like hatred, <laughs> a couple of rituals into hatred, be pretty, pretty sick. Okay, so we're gonna one, two, three, dust bowl your isle, sacking a darker wastes. Okay, we're gonna pass priority here. And I guess I'm gonna upkeep source of plowshares, the scourge. You. All right. So pointing out to one land, we are at four. It's a good draw. Gonna go on a limb and say that that's a good draw. Uh, do I want to be extra careful? No, I don't think so. Because what I can do is I can, um, if I want to be to be extra careful, I can play Parallax Wave first, and that effectively is gonna protect my uh, Exalted Angel from getting um, like Vendetta or whatever. Smother, you name it. Removal spell, no. Dothy Horror, okay. I think this one's better than that one. Flip, take four, game four. Oh, I love Exalted Angel so much. I love Exalted Angel so much. Yeah, obviously I, I, I play this game a little bit poorly, I think. Um, I mean, it, it was it was just fine. Like the misplay on the Parallax side was just, was really, really bad. I forgot that it, you know, I, I assumed that the Staffel was already in my hand and it was just, you know, it was still on top of my deck, about to be drawn on upkeep, so... Kind of got a little bit destroyed there. Um, if I wave both of these things, there's no way my opponent can win anymore, right? Because now they can chomp and they can potentially top deck a Vendetta to get rid of this. So I think it's better to just... Oh, my opponent could draw land into Dystopia. Yeah, okay, so I guess I'm just attacking. Uh, because if they land into Dystopia, they actually they actually get me good. Oh no! What I want to say, I could just like play Parallax Wave and just not crack Seal of Cleansing. That seems great. And if they do have Dystopia, just blow it up. Yeah, that was that was also a little bit of a that was a misplay right there. It's probably gonna be fine. Probably gonna be okay. Uh, here's a Silver Knight, and say go. So this also puts Lethal on the table, right? So I guess now Vendetta doesn't do it anymore. Important. So my opponent's playing like blue-black, I guess mid-range 
beatdowns. I'm not entirely sure what how I would describe my opponent's archetype. Also, I just realized something extremely hilarious. So my opponent did not shuffle. So maybe they're playing something like um, Ghastly Demise or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stifle the portent trigger. <laughs> and I just swing for lethal. <laughs> oh, this deck is awesome. I love this deck. This deck is so sick. <laughs> that was such a great way to end the game. Oh, man. I lo I'm in love. I am officially in love once again in the pre-modern format. This was lovely. I feel like I say this every single pre-modern league that I record, but I think this has been like the most fun that I've had playing pre-modern uh, so far. Uh, playing Magic, I would even say. I, that's, that's probably a little bit hyperbolic, but this was incredible. I had an incredible time. The deck worked uh, and just like hummed. The deck was just smooth. It was so, so smooth. It just felt like I was doing something like legitimately very powerful because the disruption is so good and even though i like i misplay with like some stifle and parallax i obviously i'm not super super familiar with like all of the interactions with parallax side and parallax wave so there were some missteps here and there but what you're trying to do is so so strong um that uh, i mean just having access to these broken or like this unfair angle of attack in an otherwise perfectly fair deck felt really good and obviously you know just probably the single best creature in the format right like the fact that you're playing meddling mage and that you actually can make very very good use of meddling mage because you can protect it with mom because you can you know uh, name like the cards that, that that are disrupting you um this deck felt really really cool you know uh even against like stuff like survival it's just like okay i have like this parallax wave going and like I can just name survival and I can lock that out or okay I don't care about the creature so I name all of the non creatures that I may care about because I have a wave on you know I can kind of bait my opponent into overcommitting to the board and I can just blow them out with a wave um it was very very cool uh, the, the matches were just crazy I got pretty lucky you know I, I'm you know credit where credits due my luck did uh, did some good work but um shout out to the mana and this is something that I always said about like I really, really enjoy like that uh, blue, white, red version of the of the solution deck, but the mana is just is just so bad. <laughs> it's just so so bad. Uh, you you have like you're splashing for cards that are like one and two drops that you actively want to be casting on turns one and two, and like you have like ten sources or something like that. It's just so terrible. So like this mana was smooth. Allowing me to play with Dust Bowl and Wasteland was a huge, huge deal. Like, particularly Dust Bowl did some serious work in a couple of matchups. I'm starting to believe that maybe the split should be just like two Dust Bowls, one Wasteland, or something like that. But like, that extra angle of, yeah, we're kind of like going in on, on the tides is pretty strong. I think playing Mistress Factories is very defensible as well, because it felt like we may be a little bit on the thread-like side of things. The pro the thing is, like, there are not that many cards that actually answer a Resolved Exalted Angel. Like, once you flip this, there's not that many cards that actually answer this, so you don't really need to draw that many threats. You just need to find Exalted Angel and get there. Important was really good. I am not so high on impulse and that's why i was going like a 3-1 split but like portent really shine in this entire league like every match every time i drew a portent, i was like oh, that's actually kind of neat <laughs> you know like that's pretty good so i was not a big fan of portent in the format as things started and the more that i play with it the more that i'm like, just like yep yeah, no this actually is a very very a very very good card in this format and uh, this may just be like the best cantrip in pre-modern but obviously not every deck can take advantage of it in the same on the same way but you know that's another discussion. This deck was a lot of fun. I was, I just had a fantastic time. I strongly recommend it if you want to have some some good time playing some some fair, but a little bit of fair uh, magic in pre modern right now. And uh, yeah, just make sure you fix the cyborg because the cyborg is a mess. And yes, once again, I think that the way to go with this kind of deck is just to cut the enlightened tutors. <laughs> just um, I, I'm gonna go on a little bit of an anti enlightened tutor crusade. I think that card is very very overplayed, and like decks like this can't really can't really afford to to be doing that kind of stuff. So um, 
Hopefully you had such, at least half the amount of fun that I had, like at least you had half the good time that I had, because uh, that would be way more than enough. This was amazing. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to support my content, consider joining my Patreon. You can have different tiers uh, that you can support if you liked me a little bit, maybe if you liked me more, or if you really, really liked me. All of those, uh, you can check all the information in, uh, in there. And you can also support my content through direct donations. I can play any directly, so for your choice uh, on, on, on a YouTube video or if you actually want to uh, book coaching sessions, you can do that as well. Also, don't forget that Mana Traders and DG Player are both sponsors of the stream. And if you, you can support the stream for free just by using the links that you find in the description of the video down below. And if you would like to join the Magic Online Society Leagues, you can also do that uh, with Mana Traders. Uh, any, I think literally you can build any deck in all of Premodern if you just have the cheapest um, Mana Traders uh, code or whatever. Mana Traders... Um, subscription so yep that's available to you as well thank you so much for watching we'll see you in the next video folks take care bye, -bye.